Big Flex! Yo! What's up, everybody? Welcome to the About Wellbeing Podcast, episode 5. I'm pretty sure it's episode 5. Yes. <laughs> I hope we are all having uh, an amazing day, and uh, we've just, uh, we're just crushing stuff! Ah, That's what we're here to do! Um, so today, I'm basically just going to be talking about, I wanted to share with you guys, my current training split. Now, don't tune out if you're thinking, oh, he's just going to be talking about his training split. I'm going to be talking about all types of things um, in regards to like the importance of training, a couple of different scientific facts, and like why you really should have some sort of training resistance protocol because everyone needs one. Um, as far as like that goes, I just want well, to just dive in, uh, dive into it straight away as soon as as, as soon as it's <laughs> from the get go. So basically, um, there is a whole bunch of science, and there is a lot. A lot of research that indicates that training, specifically resistance style training, so putting your body underneath that stress, has a whole bunch of not just, oh, let's make some muscles grow, has a whole bunch of brain, mind, and detoxification things that are, that are happening, which are so extremely beneficial to the human body, which we really need to take advantage of. There are studies that show that men at the age of, you know, 50, 60 plus who start resistance training, like lifting weights specifically, lifting weights, their brain starts working and operating of that of a 30 year olds almost immediately, which is crazy. As well as the whole different, uh, all the benefits of training and the release of all the different hormones that come with it. Now, obviously the hard part is, the question is, is oh gosh, what type of training do I do? Um, Corey, you're a pro and you do all the bodybuilding stuff. Um, should I be doing that too? And then the answer to that is like, fuck no. <laughs> with training, it's it literally, there's, like a, there's just a, a few factors that you need to take into consideration and kind of bunch together to figure out exactly what you need to do. And that's the first one is what do you like doing? Bodybuilding and the type of weight training that I do is very monotonous. It's the same sort of repetitive stuff with different routines and you do them all the time. And oh yeah, it's, it does seem quite boring, but like I love it and I love destroying myself in the gym. It's like the best time. It's absolute me time. It's very zen. I take the gym and uh, training very spiritually and mindfully. Like I do think like, you know, where you have a gym, like, we are so blessed. Firstly, we are so fucking blessed to have, um, like, gyms and places where we can go and exercise our bodies. Like, especially with the COVID period happening. And I was, like, training from home. The the savage workouts that I was doing wasn't savage. But outside doing things, using old bump, um, barbells, dumbbells, and dif different types of um, training methods and techniques um, to use in order to figure out, you know, what the hell can I do um, to actually build build muscle in, in the certain areas, but that whole time, it was still very, you know, I had the gym space, and when I entered there, it was, all right, it is gym time now. This is me time, which is one of the most benef beneficial things when it comes to training, like setting that time for yourself just to exercise, to let, your, to let yourself get and be fit and be better than, you know, who you were yesterday, because, you know, obviously if you've listened to some of my other podcasts, I talk in about how the importance of consistently overcoming yourself. And if you're getting to the gym, like, every day, you are consistently overcoming yourself every day, and that's just, like, obviously it teaches you discipline, routine management, you're on the road to self-mastery, especially if you can do that every day, because it's hard, man, and not everyone likes going to the gym, and putting in that resistance training, and, like, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, like, quite literally, um... Most, a lot of people don't really find that uh, extremely fulfilling or happy unless you're one of those crazy psychopaths or on the exact same wavelength as me that just can't wait to do something that sucks. <laughs> and um, I think majority of the people that are listening to this, like you're probably all just like me and you love doing things that suck because you know it's going to help you grow and help you to be um, better and you know the more sucky and the harder the workouts and the the, the times where it's the hardest and the most difficult is the best times to get in there and do it. Obviously, you know, you're going you're gonna to grow somewhere and it's not just muscles. As I was saying this the other day as well. I do think 
here's one thing. Ross Edgeley pre preaches it and a few other pre people preach it. It's like Socrates or Plato, old school philosophers. One of them was saying, if you're too much of a scholar, so someone who's too sitting down on the computer, you end up being basically too, too much of a nerd. You're, um, you're too wrapped up in your own mind and the, the doing of things. But if you're too much of an athlete, you're too much of like a jock. You know what I mean? Someone who's too like, ooh, ooh, savage, ooh, I'm going to the gym. Ooh, ooh. What you really want to be is the best combination of both. And a lot of bodybuilders and people that lift and do fitness stuff are so extremely smart. But one of the things that they, I think that a lot of people limit themselves to is they only learn about the gym and the, and, and the rest of it. And they figure out all these problems. They're, they're healthy and fit, just other areas in their life. And they're obviously they've learned discipline and stuff, but like that's all they know. And if they apply some of that stuff elsewhere, it's extremely beneficial. Anyway, I'm getting off, getting off track there. That's one, like, just the benefits of um, training. Now, where was I before that? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's take three steps back. Before talking about Plato and Socrates, talking about the uh, importance of training, talking about the bodybuilding. Yes, different types of training that you should do. So doing the things that obviously suck. Um is extremely important. Now, the gym space, yes, that's what I was talking about, the gym space. So when you get into the gym, I find it extremely important, so it doesn't have to be specifically the gym. This can be like an aerobics class, yoga, you know, bike ride, running, triathlon training, um, ballet, you know, literally whatever you do that's physically fit, that keeps you fit, even just walking. It's just respecting the setup and the, the moment before you're training, like, you know, in people, there's a lot of science that shows beh beh before people, when they actually go to eat at the dinner table, that when they do a prayer or bless their food, sorry, sniffles, hay fever se season, allergies everywhere, sniffles, apologies for that, that sounds so gross. So, people sit at the dinner table, holding hands, doing those different things, blessing their food, taking a moment, it literally puts their body in the perfect state to start digesting food better. And you literally digest your food and absorb and get more nutrients out of your food if you do that before you eat. There is scientific research that show that. What? I believe exactly the same thing before the gym. Like, I kind of been having the thoughts recently that, God damn, like, everything is a ceremony. You know, like, getting out of bed, making your coffee, like, and that's a whole little ceremony itself. Making yourself a meal, eating a meal, being with your friends, going to the gym, actually having a tea ceremony, or, like, going to yoga, you know, it, you know it's anything where you should be mindful about what you're doing, where you're setting intention, practicing the intention, and then finalizing intention is a ceremony. Gym is the exact same thing. And when you look at the best people in the world, like I remember watching a video of Kai Green, and they were just making the uh, difference. He, by the way, if you don't know who Kai Green is, he's one of the best bodybuilders in the world. Absolutely fantastic um, at what he does. And he was just warming up before the gym. People were looking at him like, he looks like a monk warming up for praying before getting into something. And like he did, he's like, his hands here, he's doing a bunch of things, but he's just stretching and uh, getting in the zone before he's training because he knows he's about to like punish himself um, in the gym. Well, I wouldn't say punish yourself. <laughs> That's a victim mindset. Um, he's going to really uh, train himself to make himself grow physically and mentally in the gym. But he's just setting up the space. And, you know, what the main point that I want to come across is that like we are so blessed to have these rooms, equipment, gym, all of these different things that if we're not taking advantage of some of it, like, we're really quite silly <laughs> if you're not um, I can understand that it's hard to get motivated I can understand that when you get to the gym and you try to work out you're like oh man I do not have any goddamn energy I can understand that like doing some of the things can be boring or it's not like quite quite happy to you but that's where the resistance and the discipline to something comes in as well as finding the trick what are you good at what do you like doing start figuring out a way to do it to like get yourself fit and healthy so when you res respect to the gym and you get there and when you actually start exercising and you come at it with that kind of sense of, you know, being mindful and giving it the respect it deserves, you're giving your body the respect it deserves. You're giving your fitness and your health the respect it deserves because you're setting apart that time. One thing that I do with my training is I put my phone away, like boom, in my bag. I accept myself the rule. It's okay to check it if I need to check it for something, but I have to go to my bag, quickly check my phone, put it back into my bag. Boom. See you later. Um, because the training is that like important place of time where you're really, you know, giving your giving your mind and body the resources to transform itself. Now, one beautiful thing that I extremely um, really try to promote is that you, obviously your mind and your body is 
it's the same damn thing. If you've got a healthy mind, it's a lot easier for you to get motivated, have the energy and get into the gym. If you've got a very healthy body, it's a lot easier for your mind to get over anxiety, get over depression and, and, and all of those things, which we all face, which every single one of us face. And if your body's really healthy, it's very easy to do that and to, and to tap into you know, higher potential states of yourself, which is ultimately the goal to consistently overcome yourself. Like, who doesn't want to do that? Goddamn everyone. So that's like, no, there's there's a lot coming in to just training in the gym, which is so specifically. But the number one thing is getting there consistently. If you do want to change your body, or you do got to get fit, or you do want to get fit, you have to do something like minimum three to four times a week, every single week for the rest of your damn life, and. There's, there's no getting out of that for, for, for literally physical fitness health. You have to do that. <laughs> um, but, but the trick is, is people will stick to something for three, four months, get bored, and then go, I don't know what to do. Let's do something again. Uh, let's, do some, let's start going, doing nothing. So it's like what I really preach is this term that I like to call saying having the right excuses. If you, and it's very easy to do. What you can do is you can, there's a very good exercise for this. You write out a list of ex excuses for something and excuses against something. And if you need to do something, basically, if you have more excuses for one thing than excuses that you don't have for the other, for, for excuses that you don't, you will do, you will do that. But if you have more or bigger or important excuses to not do something than the excuses to do it, you never ever going to do it. So um, uh, like a really good ex excuse to let's say um, not go to the gym is that like, okay, so uh, I've got work, um, I, I travel, I haven't got the time, um, I find it really, really hard, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm unconfident about getting in the gym. And that is a whole bunch of excuses not to go to the gym. But if you can switch around and give yourself the right excuses and remove those other ones to get into there, and using like the positive term, like the right excuses, you will get there. Whereas if you're looking at it, it's like, okay, no, I can go this time. I really want to get fit and healthy. I'm, I'm, I desire a partner that looks like this or whatever it is. Like that's a really big motivation to get there. I want to feel confident. I want to have energy. I want to change my body. I really want to be fit. And I have all the resources. I have gym. All I have to do to, to learn something about training is just YouTube it or follow someone who I relate with who is an expert in the field or buy a program or do a course or get a BT and a PT and learn all the things. Now I have all the excuses. And another uh, one really important excuse which I think is awesome to do as soon as you start getting bored with something. When you get bored with something, write out something new for yourself. But you know, that's really hard. People find that, to, to recognize that, to go, oh, I actually need to sit down, take out 10 minutes of my day. 10 minutes is all it damn takes. But just even thinking about that, like, oh, I've got to go write down, like, 10 minutes, write out something new. What can I do? What does my week look like? What's a day look like? When do I want to work out? When do I not want to work out? That's one of the best things that you can ever do. Like, I like having Mondays and Fridays as my recharge days. No training. Walking, stretching, ice bathing, saunering, meditating, journal writing, reading, all the rest of it. I love doing all of those things on my recharge days. Getting a massage, oh, how good. And I like, I live for those those days. <laughs> I train so hard in the gym that when it when it gets to, you know, Mondays and a, Monday or Friday, I'm like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> I don't get to do this today. But that's where um, a whole bunch of like discipline and the rest of it comes in. Now... I have done a whole bunch of spill of a whole different things and I've related a lot of things to uh, bodybuilding, but when it comes to you, and I do know a lot of my listeners will be bodybuilders and, and people that are they're chasing that fitness journey, and one of the most important things I can say to you guys is to learn all these skills first. It's extremely important to learn all the bodybuilding skills and learn all the techniques and learn all the different you know, skills and learn about your body and get connected with your body and figure out how to change it and squeeze your muscles and enjoy the process before and get disciplined doing that. Even if it sucks, even if you don't enjoy it, learn all of those things first and then you can apply that to anything else that you do. Because obviously everyone's, so this is where it comes back to, like what are you doing, what do you want to do? Everyone has completely different biomechanic, biomechanics, which is how you move your body, different size limbs, muscles, connections, tendons, blah, 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 all the rest of it. The similar way we have fingerprints. I mean, like, we all look different. We all got different fingerprints. Um, 
We all have completely different bodies. We all have completely different desires and passions. Now, what are you currently doing for your fitness and your health? So remember as well, the fitness and mind and the body are the same thing. If you are experiencing anything in your life, in your life right now, which is a little bit shit as far as I'm feeling anxious about some stuff, I'm feeling depressed about some stuff, not really happy with my body, I'm not really feeling too healthy, I'm not really that energetic, I'm not comfortable taking clothes off um, at the beach or somewhere with friends, you know, I'm not really that confident I could go for a really big height or lift this or do this. I kind of think like, for God's sakes, we are human beings. People that have been running, climbing, jumping around on trees, swinging, hunting, gathering, collecting, lifting, picking up, squatting, moving around. Like we've been doing these things for centuries. And if you can't do some of those basic things like efficiently and as optimally as possible, then you have to do something about it. And like, sorry, I know some people would just be like, oh no, listening to that <laughs> from me. But if you're not at the optimal condition and you can't do all the basic things a human can do, like if you can't do like half a chin up or something or even just hang for a, for a little while on, on something, like you're going to have to make a difference. And then if you have goals to be like a total, complete, optimized human being like myself, it's like, okay, is your body as optimized right now as it should be? Not as it could be, as it should be. <laughs> and then go out there, get after and do it. Well, hence why I think, you know, with fitness stuff, learning how to move, touch all your body, those move and uh, squeeze your muscles and learn about your body is so important. Like someone else's body is so different to your own. And when you train with someone or you do teach someone to train or you learn a bunch of things from me or whatever, and you know, you learn, I've had, I've done a lot of training sessions with physios. So I understand all the terminology, all the stuff. I get them to educate the crap out of me. And I'm like, yeah, this is great stuff. But you realize that your own body and like, it's kind of like learning to drive a car or even a trolley that has certain kinks and niggles and things that move around. It's the exact same thing with your body. And I think it's amazing being able to learn what your body actually does, where it's sore, where does this, where's the imbalances, you know, where's it really good, where's it strong, like where's this and how can you maximize that shit? How can you do it? But anyway, I'm getting a little bit off track again. Every single person is a completely different, different desires, passions and passions and all the rest of it. But what are you currently doing to to do for the physical fitness, like pick something. And if you haven't picked anything, try a bunch of shit and commit to stuff for a while. Try bodybuilding for a while. I think everyone, if, if you're someone, like if, if mum, you're listening to this, do some damn resistance training. <laughs> um, like if you're someone who hasn't experienced any of that stuff, like try it for a while, learn the stuff, set yourself a monthly goal and give it your absolute best for a month. And if you hate it, then change it. Try cross CrossFit for a while. Try some of the things where you're putting your body under some serious resistance. If that doesn't work, move to more things, swimming, riding, running, any, any of those type of things, dance classes, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, Try it. Put yourself out. Martial arts, jiu-jitsu, all of that stuff. Amazing. Some of those people are so strong. There's all these different things out now. Yoga, animal movements, all the rest of it. Give something a crack and, and go like really hard at it because you cannot put a price on your physical fitness. Like I, was, I remember saying to someone that I was um, coaching that they're really successful as far as um, money goes and um, all about a lot of people like, in my friendship group and, and, and his friendship group and things were talking about, you know, that they can't wait to buy Lamborghinis and they really want to get them and I always kind of they were, I remember them explaining to me like oh you know the way people look at you when you drive a Lamborghini and the way that you feel when you're in a car like that is sublime it's amazing like you just feel like something out of this world and as far as I'm concerned I am living in my Lamborghini like my my suit my skin suit <laughs> that um, that I own is my Lamborghini. When I take my shirt off at places, I don't re really recognize it because I don't care too much, but my friends are telling me like, oh, those people are looking at you. Or, or those people over there, like they're noticing your stuff, especially when you're really lean. And it's it, it's amazing just having that, like an, an achieving that goal, a, a goal. And for me, no, it's not a, a Lamborghini, it's a nice car, but well, I want to get it a, get it up to a Lamborghini. We're on that goal there, we're on that goal. Um, but yeah, the, that's sort of what it's like. It's like my body is this supercar. Let's get this like, just sort it out as best as possible. And like, you know, it kind of comes down to the whole YOLO thing. Like, I guess you only live once. But 
if you only live once, it's not it's not the way to look at it as in, oh, you only live once, I'm going to eat this burger, you know what I mean? It's like, you only live once, be the absolute best human you can. Like, you've been blessed with this physique. Respect it. Respect your body and care about yourself because it's just in the words of Jordan Peterson, once you take care of yourself and you get the discipline, hopefully you have enough left over to take care of someone else, whether it's your family, friends, Work on that more. Get it, get it, get it built up even better. Get that resilience really strong, and then give back to the community and like other people. And you can do that all literally just through training and learning about yourself and learning about your body. Really recommend trying a whole bunch of different sports, different exercises, and things. But you know, if what if what comes easiest for you is like seriously, there are so many gyms out there. Try some sort of exercise that, or get some sort of exercise routine from someone. There's something that you can stick to. Even if it's not the most enjoyable, like really try to enjoy it. Um, but even if it's uh, not the most, you've got to get it done and be proud of yourself. Like if you're getting to the gym like three times a week for half an hour, you should be extremely proud of yourself. Like that is amazing. But if you have the goal to be like, you know, one of the most next level, extremely optimal body, you know, as absolutely best as possible, you've got to do more. And you got to recover harder. <laughs> so I hope you kind of learned something from that. That's kind of like my insights on training. So now I'm actually going to talk about um, training itself and like my training split. So currently at the moment, what I did was I did something really cool. Um, I got a DNA test and it kind of told me that my um, endurance to power was 40% power, 60% endurance. So that's how like my, my muscles work. So... Power exercises is like five to six reps, something really strong. Boom, boom, boom. That is working my white twitch, fast twitch muscle fibers. Endurance, red twitch, 60%. So I should be doing more endurance type training. So you go, oh, Yo. oh I lost you there for a second. So um, yeah, camera uh, card was full. So yes, endurance training is when is is more like 12 to 20 reps um, in that sort of, in sort of realm. So what I did with my training program was I was like, okay, so I need to have a certain amount of training that's going to be, you know, power, and I need a certain type of training that's going to be endurance training. So what am I going to do there? So I broke up my, my training split. And I've used to, be, used to doing bro splits for, like, bodybuilding stuff. So it would literally be, like, chest and tries, back and buys, shoulders and traps, um, hammies and uh, quads. <laughs> that's basically kind of, kind of how, roughly how it would go. Then, yeah, something like that. Um... So what I did was I changed my split around and I'm actually loving it at the moment, but it was really hard to actually make the transition and I train upper body day. So this makes it a lot more fun as well, guys. So like doing a mix of different movements makes everything so much more fun. So what I do is I have an upper body. So Monday's recharge day, Tuesday, I do a hamstring dominant leg day. Wednesday, I do a upper body heavy day. So on that hamstring leg dominant day, I do like endurance stuff. Everything is 10 to 20 reps. Heavy day, Wednesday, upper body day, I do like, I do chest, shoulders, back, you know, triceps, biceps, all of those, but everything's around sort of the six rep range and I am lifting heavy. <laughs> uh, Thursdays, I do a back day and everything's a little bit more endurance. There's a little little bit of power stuff there. Friday, rest day. Saturday, heavy leg day. We hitting it hard, hitting it heavy, doing all the big, all the big movements, the compounds and all the good stuff. Sunday, I do push day and that is more endurance type training. And then I do stepper on the rest days. I ride like 50 minutes of bike Monday to when Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I also do a shitload of stepper, which is great. Um, and yeah, mixing cardio up is great. If you don't know in your routines, which is extremely important, as it, and it has been showed to make yourself healthier, build more muscle, and the rest of it, you want 80% of your training to be lifting weights, 20% of your training to be cardio. Ooh, people who say that cardio is not good. Ooh, <laughs> but there is also some fun stuff that you can do, like ballistic type training, which is cool. Um, which is just the example is a push up and a clap. So you push up, clap. What happens is as you're pushing up through the air, at the very end, so yeah, at the end of your rep, you're pushing through like you just got to push through like crazy. Like you're jumping as high as you can, you're pushing as high as you can. So when you're doing like let's say for push ups, you're pushing as far as you can to clap and get as much air as possible on a bench press as you're pushing up you kind of stop towards the end and like you slow down before you lock out so there is a whole bunch of science that shows that if you add in one ballistic style training exercise into your routine you're going to get an absolute shitload out of it and grow more muscle than if you wouldn't 
Ooh. So I thought I'd share that with you. I also do um, what is really uh, sort of interesting is I like to mix up a bunch of one side exercises like leg days. I do a lot of like single legged leg press, single legged leg extensions, things like that. Um, I like to do like weights where I have two different things in, in my hands, which is really um, interesting. And yes, so that's just talking about the split. Now, this is one other thing which is extremely important, which is what I cover in great detail in my training program, which is up and coming. Woo! Not too far off of finishing uh, the ultimate series of that bad boy, so be out looking for that because there is just so much going on with there. Like, as an upgrade, someone you won't need anyone ever to help you in the gym ever again. <laughs> it's it's so good. But um, what I do go into great detail is, which is the, probably the most important thing when it comes to resistance training for anyone. This is for absolutely anyone listening to this. If you want to get results somewhere and you can apply this to not just uh, training muscles, but anywhere in your life as far as something that needs detail. And what it is, is literally just a lot of people will get into the gym. You know, people find it hard. Again, talking to people who actually get into the gym, they find it hard, they're not know what they're doing, they don't know how to keep their energy, push things through and actually exhaust their muscles and, um, in order to make something grow. And then if they don't see results, they get unmotivated and they go, no! So what's the hack around that? And that's literally just, the hack to do that is to just learn how to squeeze your muscles properly throughout the entire range of the rep. And I talk about this and I have labels about it, but basically just as a bicep curl, just for as, as an example. Now, also I talk about training is very similar to meditation. Like when I breathe in, like meditating is focusing on your breath the whole way in when you pause, the whole way out when you pause. And then you notice your thoughts. That is like the bare essence <laughs> of uh, meditation. So it's the same thing with your training. Like if you think about your breath, you're breathing in. When you do a rep, you're lifting up. When you meditation, you pause your breath at the top. You squeeze your rep at the top. And then when you breathe out, you're letting the rep um, go down. You're focusing about it the whole time. And then you stop before you come back up again. It's the exact same thing. It's the same damn thing. You just got to be focusing on it and not let your mind wander, which is extremely hard. Now, where muscle stimulus and actually making results come from is... Basically, Ben Pekulski goes over this a lot. Ben Pekulski is a wizard for training stuff. You can listen to his podcast, Muscle Intelligence, if you want to learn anything kind of like really good health related. He does go into a bit of training stuff, but you have to kind of look for the interviews where people are interviewing him. <laughs> Not so much on his podcast, but you can find that stuff um, on there anyway. Really good. But what well, basically, a lot of what they talk about is just like minimal, effect, minimal effective dose for stimulation to make your muscles grow. And like, what does that look like? It's basically kind of like executing your rep absolutely perfectly. And what that means is whatever muscle you're training, what you're doing is from where your muscle connects to your bones on one end to where it connects into the other end, shorting that resistance with um, the minimal load to make your muscle grow. Because there's maximal load, a lot of the time you have to throw the weight up. So the weight's not really, if you're throwing the weight up, as far as inertia goes, if you understand what inertia, inertia is, like if you start pushing something and uh, like something, if you're pushing something before push, like along the ground, like imagine you had a box on the ground and you were to push it and it was really heavy and while you're trying to push or even just a car trying to push it like, oh, this is hard. And then as soon as you start pushing it, you're like, oh, this is easier now. It's the same thing with your lifting weight. So if you flick something up really hard because it's too heavy for you, then it's like, you know, if it's a 10 kilo weight, just an example, and you struggle really hard to get it up and you flick it up, it's going to be like four kilos worth of load the whole time. So you really want to squeeze something perf perfectly, but it's being mindful, doing the meditation thing and focusing on your on your reps. Like sometimes I'm doing a bicep curl just the whole way through through the motion and then squeezing up the top and then coming all the way back down, focusing on it. Now, this is something extremely important to know. The negative range of the mo motion of the rep is where your muscles grow. That's what makes muscles grow. The negative thing, letting the weights down. Like if you do a lap pull down, it's like letting the weight go back up. If you're doing a bench press, you know, you push the weight, bench press up and then it's you got to whoa, slow down before it comes back to your um, chest. That is... What builds muscle? The pushing moment, the, the, the positive or the pulling motion, all that does is burn calories and get you stronger. That's it. That doesn't actually 
create crazy muscle stimulus. It's the way down. So the only reason we want to get powerful and get stronger so that we can lift the weights up by the, ourselves and then slowly drop them back down. So that's what we want to do. I mean, we want, and the way to train them to get stronger is by not f flicking them up. You know, if you want power, you've got to be squeezing it the whole time um, on the way up. Now, that is absolute gold. That is so important to know. For whatever training you're doing, to know to train it properly, don't cheat yourself and actually execute it how it's supposed to be executed. Now, where a lot of my stuff comes in, or what I think is the best, because there's so many different training stories. How do I train? What do I do? Do I train like this? What program do I follow? I don't, I'm not sure with this. People say, train this way, lots of reps. People say, this train this way, blah, 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 blah. You need to train what's literally best for you. Like that, and that is it, and what works the best. But there is one sort of kind of universal thing, and that is like, whatever muscle that you're training, or whatever you're doing, it's like, shorten the... The rat, shorten the muscle <laughs> for where, 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 it can, the, where it inserts and where it c connects. Shorten that, under load. <laughs> That's like the, the most effective thing and, and that will create muscle stimulus. But what you can do is, because the body is so complex and you have so many different muscles in just one little muscle group as far as everything goes, it's like, okay, I need to do that stimulation but in all different areas of the muscle it's not just one complete rep so because i find that like let's say for a bicep curl as an example from the very bottom of the rep to halfway up is a lot harder from halfway up to the very top so this is where all the stuff that like my training kind of comes in and there's a little nugget for you to take away if you're training if you're a bodybuilder or someone who is uh, listening to my stuff this is key for you try it out like even if you are advanced and you're bigger than me and you're fitter than me um this could still be extremely beneficial to you. Like, this is some gnarly stuff if you don't know it already. If you're someone who's not sure about the gym or whatever you're doing, try this stuff for whatever you're doing when it comes to yoga or something else. When you're learning about your body and you're trying to get connected with it, this stuff is like the best. And this is it. So there's different ranges of the, um, of the reps where your um, muscles are going to be stronger than w where they usually are. So halfway, as an example, with the bicep curl. From the bottom of the rep to halfway, I'm not as strong. Like, I fatigue there. So when I'm executing everything properly, which is what I always do first, always execute something um, as perfectly as possible, control those negatives on the way down, be meditating as you're, as you're meditating on your rep, I should say. And then, so once, my, once this lower part fatigues, I'm like, well, I've still got more juice in the top. So now I'll just, I'll ju I just squeeze it at the top. Squeeze, squeeze all the juice out of that. Well, okay, now that's fatigued. I've got my, my muscle stimulus. Like, I've still got some left on the way down, not the way up, because that's completely fatigued. So what can I do here? Now is when you do your force rep or something like where you jack the weight up um, nice and fast, spot yourself safely, and then slowly let it come down. And then you might have a little bit extra right at the bottom. Or you let it come down and pause, let it come down and pause, let it come down and pause. There's all these different types of training vari variations that um, you can use as best as possible to get an effective workout. So when someone says, oh, I don't know how to gym, or, oh, I'm not motivated, or, oh, I don't feel energy in the gym and it's really hard, like, honestly, if you know how to train properly and you know how to do that type, those type of things, then that excuse is a load of shit. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. It is. All it is, is that excuse that just screams at me, this is just, I don't know how to train on my own. Can't do it. I don't understand the science of it. I don't understand blah, 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 blah. And honestly, like, I mean, you go through school doing PE, doing all these different things. Um, you don't really learn, like, we didn't really learn how to train too much properly in the gym, like, at school or something. And then it's like, okay, I need to join a gym to keep health and healthy and fit. Now what the fuck do I do? <laughs> Like, it's so hard. But if you, obviously, it's the same thing. If you have goals to be, like, the most ultimate, like, uh, human being possible and, like, you want to respect your um, skin suit, you want to respect your body, you want to have the most optimal, healthy, feeling body that's looking good with healthy muscles because, you know, you literally only live once, so give yourself the gift of it. And then you get to the stage where, okay, I've got to start going to the gym and I go to a PT who's just had like some sort of online course of just like learning all the basic stuff and how to do the exercises, but not how to actually squeeze and train and execute them properly. Then you're kind of fucked. Like, I just feel sorry. Like, it's hard. Like, I feel sorry for the people that haven't sort of had that education. Like, this should be common knowledge to damn everyone. 
Like it really should be. And that's why I actually recommend, I recommend this podcast so much. And if you know someone who needs to hear this stuff, like please send it on to them. Not, I'm not trying to like promote my podcast here. This is purely out of someone who needs to do this. Like if you hear anyone, if you know anyone that's like, oh, I can't train because it's too hard. I don't have the energy. I don't have the motivation. I get there. I'm not sure what to do. Blah, 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 blah. It's fair enough, but if you understand those principles of, okay, all I need to do is squeeze my muscles in this one exercise to like failure here, and then I can squeeze it to a little bit more failure there, and then I can focus on that negative moment because we know that negative part of the rep. Because now we know that that negative part of the rep is what's going to make the muscle grow, then we can go out there and just succeed in whatever it is. You can get any PT to write you out, or like you can, I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got workouts and stuff on my website, but you can get anyone to, to send you any type of workout, but if you're training like that, and you're figuring out, okay, how can I get the best responses possible, I remember Corey said, this is what I want to do to get to a feed, uh, fatigue, you're going to get results, big time, and it's not just that, once you've got those results and that's happening, then you're... You get the mind benefits, you get the health benefits, you get the, the hormone release and the detoxification, you know, things that happen during, during when you're training. Like you get those, that endorphin rush, you get that, you get that feeling of satisfaction. You have that feeling of you've experienced resistance, you haven't really wanted to do it, you, you've gone out there, you've got it and you've done it. Like literally there's no excuses. Um, but if you do, remember I said before, and if you know there is no excuses, the only excuses that there is are the ones that you've given yourself. So you should give yourself some better excuses. As I said, that exercise, like takeaways from this, do the exercise for excuses, just for the gym or exercise in general. What excuses do I have to get to the gym? Then give yourself some more. What ex- what or even or exercise? What excuses do I have to not do exercise or not go to the gym? Reduce those <laughs> and, and get rid of them. Then figure out what you're going to do, get to the gym, what kind of split you want. I went over my split beforehand, adopt that. You can do something really easy. You can just do like push-pull legs if, if you needed. I mean, there's all the equipment in the gym. You can see all the different exercises that they do. And then just go practice and, and start falling in love with your body and falling in love with the process. And then as soon as it gets boring or you don't like it anymore or you, 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 whatever it is, Move on to something else, like do the yoga, do the rest of it. But I, as I said, the benefits for resistance training um, are huge. Uh, sorry, takeaways. Do the, do the excuses list. Figure out what you're going to do for your training. Execute that. Fall in love with the process. And then reap the benefits. Figure out what they are. Notice how different you feel. And then Spread that with some some other people because you deserve to. As I said beforehand, we are blessed to have the gym. We are blessed to have these bodies. You know, it is it's an absolute gift that we have this knowledge. Because hundreds of years ago, we didn't have this training, fitness, and health knowledge. Like we didn't have it, and we do now. Why not take absolute advantage of it? I, know I have, and I feel incredible. And as I said before, and I'm, I'm like living in my own Lamborghini every single fucking day, which is just great and words can't like describe how how handy it is like and how good it is every single time one of my friends just say to me like one of my friends doesn't have to be a stranger just like man you're looking good or toy you look jack today i'm just like oh yes <laughs> that is why we do it <laughs> well one of the reasons not for the health and the fitness type of stuff but just having that acknowledgement of just like you know it's just they're reinforcing to you that you've overcome yourself it's not the, like oh they're telling you that you're jacked. It's like, I've worked my ass off for this. And they're acknowledging that you've worked your ass off and that you're continually doing so, which is like the best thing ever. So yeah, just to recap again, I'm just going to say, we're blessed to have these bodies. We're blessed to have the gyms. We're blessed to have the knowledge. If you're not taking advantage of this stuff, you're not taking advantage of your life. I know that's quite negative, but I'm sorry. But the opposite is quite true. If you are taking advantage of this, then you are taking advantage of your life and you will live happier, better, healthier, fitter. It's amazing. We have all this stuff. Go out there, learn about it, fall in love with the process, fall in love with the gym, fall in love with your body, fall in love with exercise and movement, do all the things you need to do, become conscious of how you're training and all the different exercises and things and enjoy the love because it really is. It just helps fill you up good. So I hope you got some stuff out of this podcast. Um, if you haven't seen me on Instagram, just Corey Bauer on Instagram, subscribe to our website. I've got some really good 
um, resources on the website, www.coreyboutwell.com. We've got a whole bunch of articles and a bunch of cool things on there, and some videos, my YouTube channel, obviously, if you are watching this on YouTube, I have like a bunch of workouts and things where I do talk about all these, all these different types of things, and I will be doing an interview with Dylan Claridge soon, who's my physio guy that I work with, who just makes a whole bunch of physio jamble. <laughs> And then I make sense out of the jam ball. <laughs> but no, what he says is absolute gold. So, yeah. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. If you haven't already, I dare you to go and smash something in the gym today. And what I said beforehand with the, with the reps, think about that when you're training. And who knows, you might just uh, grow a little bit or be a little bit sore or a little bit better the next day. Goodbye!